Hi there YouTube, this is the Magnus bringing you another Total War Warhammer online ladder battle. My opponent chose to play as Clan Angmar and I decided to bring the Empire. So let's take a look at the builds. This is a new build I'm trying to put together something for Angmar. Um, not sure I love it, but it's a start. Uh, I have three of the great swords in the center and they are flanked on the sides by flagellants for my infantry. Behind them I have hand gunners and I also bring Sterling's Revenge with their uh, awesome armor piercing missiles. Behind that you'll see the Sunmaker and I bring that because it's the Sunmaker and it's incredible. And on each flank I have a unit of Empire Knights and for my leadership I have a General of the Empire and one Amber Wizard. Now taking a look at what my opponent did here. Uh, he has, along the flanks here, Dwarf Warriors, so he has four of those in total, plus one in the back would be five. Up front, two Iron Breakers. Behind them, he has three of the Quarrelers. He has one double-ranked-up Thunderer. He's got one of the uh, King Lun, the Ethereal, I hope I'm saying that right, um, Thane, which is, this guy's impossible to kill, and you'll find out how serious I am by that. A runesmith and he brings Belagar Ironhammer uh, as his leader and here he has two long beards with great weapons. So uh, a, a lot of punch on his side. So right away the Sunmaker is going to be targeted to fire at the center of his line uh, because it spreads around a bit and we're going to get some good hits. So we go ahead and do that and fire off the volley. In the meantime I start moving my cavalry up on the flanks so that we're able to get as good a surround as possible. Uh, I'm not doing anything with the flying yet. I'm waiting to summon a manticore and kind of see how the Sunmaker does. You don't. You got to be careful if you're flying out around here. You will get hit by your own artillery. This thing is as wild as can be. And as you can see, it's putting a hurting on the dwarfs right away. And it's also pushing some of their units back, breaking up their unit cohesion. Uh, because people get knocked to the ground, these little dwarfs get knocked down, and some of them get up, and it takes a while, and other ones stay as bloody little stains. Uh, so they keep pushing forward, and I've got my cavalry out on the flanks, so I'm going to continue to kind of creep in on them a little bit. You're going to see I just summoned uh, my uh, manticore over here. Uh, so now I have three flying units to, to play with and throw against them. And he's kind of getting clustered up here in the middle, which is only going to help uh, my Sunmaker do its thing. It is currently at the Sunmaker has 30 kills and it's done a good bit of damage, which is not bad at all. Um, very smart of him though to push immediately. I've had some opponents that kind of have that deer in the headlights thing going on when the Sunmaker starts shooting and they think about it for a while. Not anything you want to think about. Now, as his missiles get into range, I'm going to want to make a push with my infantry. Uh, so I go ahead and do that. I ha currently have my hand gunners. Uh, targeting his runesmith because I hate runesmiths, uh, but it's also going to get some action on the quarrelers, of course. Uh, my cavalry is coming in on each flank, and I'm going to send my flying corps in around the rear to try to do some damage as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to time this as well as I can. Fire still coming down the middle from my artillery, my infantry about to come in, and my flying getting ready to start some trouble for them as well. Uh, the Empire Knights get a nice charge on both flanks. But the dwarf warrior is pretty darn resilient. Like that's not a, you know, that's not a devastating charge by any stretch of the imagination. So I use my flying core to go after his feral manticores. I also put down a flock of doom. Now I know the, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I know the dwarfs are resistant to magic, but they are not, you know, immune. They're gonna take damage, and with how clustered up they are, flock of doom is quite a good spell. Now I'm trying to avoid shooting my own guys best I can. Uh, with my artillery, but I'll be damned if I'm going to leave, you know, any powder on the side. I'm going to bring everything. Cycle charging the cab on both sides. You can see a number of his missile units are now fleeing the field. Um, but I do lose my Amber Wizard way too early in a crazy ass try to get at Belagor and put a little hit on him. Uh, so, not not the best thing. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't my. Uh, yes, it was. It was my. Uh, Amber Wizard. I still have my Feral Manticore. I start moving my missiles into the gap so that they can fire uh, successfully into the enemy lines. 
uh, still using my flying to dive in and take out missiles. I've got my artillery uh, being, I'm trying to change targets as often as possible, the things that I'm not, you know, surrounding with my own troops. I, these guys are finally somewhere they can shoot, so they're going to take care of these dwarf warriors some. In comes more missiles. I had pulled out my cavalry on this side, so I figured, hey, let's hit them with some artillery and then hit them with a brutal charge. Uh, that comes in. At just that time, he puts down the rune of Oath and Steel. Perfect timing on his part, an excellent play. Uh, and as you can see, it's a pretty even matchup across the field. Nobody able to seize any sort of a big advantage. I start trying to use my cav more creatively, not just on the flanks, but punching into the middle. And that starts to have success along with the, the great swords, you know, really doing a great job of chopping down uh, stunties. So he has much more that's fled, whereas my army, everybody is engaged. I'm yet to have anybody flee. I have had an Amber Wizard killed, uh, but I haven't had anybody run away. Some point blank action here firing at these dwarf warriors and just as they think they're gonna get a great charge I bring in uh, the flying contingent to break that up I'm also cross shooting so is he so we've got gunfire and arrow fire everywhere uh, here we're gonna go for another charge and get into these uh, uh, coilers that have their back turned to us that's not gonna be a good time for them good time for us though so we're alright with that <laughs> and uh, just just Constantly, this I was more busy in this battle than I've been in any battle in a long time. So, in the center, he's got Belagor Iron Hammer here. I'm trying to work on this guy. I'm trying to get him down. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, but he's he's a, a very tough dude. He can take a lot of stuff. I'm trying to chase off these units that have been, you know, trying to get after my Sterling's Revenge because they're a very powerful missile unit. And I want them to be able to to shoot with with as much uh, safety as possible. Um, a lot of his uh, army that had fled is now coming back and he's putting them to work. So the balance bar is now in my favor, but there's still a lot of fighting to do. As you can see from the time, uh, he's doing a great job of targeting his ranged units at, at you know my key units, which is you know definitely the way to go. I'm cycle charging. Now I'm gonna make a big play try to take care of Belagor, so I'm bringing in the flying contingent, I've got you know more of my infantry in here, flagellants, I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink at them, uh, in comes the feral manticore to get a charge, Belagor is still alive, he's trying to pull out, get out of this mess because he's horribly outnumbered, the flagellants are swinging at him, uh, those guys are ugly by the way, <laughs> and uh, they just have an atom. Uh, my cavalry starts going across the field to chase the missiles. They are very beat up, and I'm just hoping that they'll make it there. Uh, I decide to just have the Manticore uh, work on Belagar while I get these guys fighting the Thane, uh, King Lun Ironhammer. He, used the rune, he has the Rune of Negation. He puts down um, the uh, Rune of Oath and Steel, so that's really going to put the kibosh on my plans of doing a bunch of damage there. He gets his... his his guys into my Sterling's Revenge. They're decent melee combatants, uh, as it says, not very creative of me, but yeah, they are decent, uh, but, you know, they're they're not good. Uh, you know, they're not something ideally you want to be doing melee combat, but now I've completely broken and routed his army, and you're probably wondering at this point, well, it's going to be over soon, right? Well, not so fast. Four minutes. Now what could possibly take four minutes? Well, this guy is impossible to kill virtually without magic. So I send everything in. That's my first, you know, kind of initial response. Like I'll just kill him by overwhelming him with things. And you're gonna see he starts to break some of my guys. Cavalry runs away, infantry runs away, more guys run away. So I'm like, all right, this strategy's not working. I'm gonna put, you know, everybody in different places and try to keep him in the middle and just shoot him with the guns. Well, I use my flying to knock him over every time he tries to get close to something. So, knock him over, fly away. And remember, this is, right now, this is at, well, you know, two, at least two times speed. So, this whole time we're shooting at him, that's how much we have to show for it. I charge into him, you know, you knock him down, you barely do any damage to the guy. I send in the cav, see if maybe their charge is a little more brutal for him. Uh, he keeps chasing my guns, so I keep charging him with flying and cavalry. And I mean, look at this. 
This guy's all by himself, being shot, completely surrounded, attacked by two units of cav, being beat on by flyers, and it takes me a four, a full four minutes to kill a guy who has less than 2,000 health. Now, something's wrong with that, in my opinion. Now, it obviously it didn't cost me the win, so I don't feel that bad about it, but having to waste four minutes beating down one crazy-ass dwarf seems like a bit much, so... Uh, I'm not sure what needs to be done, but there's 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 something that's stacking between the ethereal and the resistance of the dwarves and whatever. It just turns this guy into a, a, the most hard to kill thing in the game by a city mile. I I was I also want to mention I was fighting him during the fight, but after the fight when it was only him over four minutes to kill that little stunny bastard. Uh, so let's look at the tail of the tape. Flagellants did well. Um, the great swords were definitely good as well. Uh, my hand gunners and Sterling's Revenge put up good kills, as did the cavalry. Um, my flying army did well. My amber wizard, I did a poor job microing, but thankfully I got a feral manticore out of it, so not a bad deal, uh, but still a bad play on my part. Uh, the Sunmaker, almost 100 dead dwarfs. I'll take that, especially with the uh, some of the quality he had on the field. Looking at my opponent's army, a very good army, very well played, good game to the Saint Nietzsche. Uh, I, I, I hope you don't subscribe to his philosophy because you'd be a very unhappy person. Uh, the Runesmith stuck around a long time. I, I've already said what I have to say about that guy. And Belagar put up 61 kills and hung for quite some time until I threw everything at him. I'd say the most disappointing thing was the Ironbreakers, uh, kill wise. You know, they stuck around, sure, you know, but against the great swords who cost a lot less they they really didn't shine so might want to change something up here for when you're playing against the empire but anyways if you learned something if if you enjoyed the battle or you just feel like being nice please hit that thumbs up and like please subscribe uh, until the next time this is the magnus and i will see you on the ladder